So it's one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot, and I think it's you know it's central to what we're talking about now. It's just you know this relationship that we're talking about between feminism and the arts. Obviously, you know the roots of of women of color feminism in particular, but I would argue to say feminism in general. You know, really a lot of the sort of seminal, you know, sort of foundational feminist thinkers are or were artists, right? As well, I mean, you know, Audre Lorde, June Jordan. Uh, Amata Aydou, uh, you know, still living with us, Cheryl Clark and Ntozaki Shang, and many, many others, right? Um, and I love that you, you know, you started to talk about the imagination and how important imagination and, you know, sort of vision and these things that do sound hokey, but for those of us who are artists or in the humanities, we think about these things, right? And we, we do find them politically useful, right? Vision in particular. Um, so I'm curious to, to hear where that tradition of the feminist you know, sort of artist intellectual or artist thinker, or artist teacher, where do you see that tradition in 2014? And who are some people who, you know, who fall into that tradition who inspire you? Mm. Wow. Um, well, she's not here no more, but Octavia Butler, you know, she's like the, the Bible <laughs> to me. Like, you know, she was she she was a seer. I mean, everything she wrote is like coming true. Wow. You know, I'm really happy she wrote Parable of the Sower when she did because I'm not as freaked out as I would be. I know, you know, you have to read Parable of the Sower and then you 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 understand the time we're in because wow. she breaks it down. She's like, you know, corporate takeovers. Um, indentured servitude, making a big, huge comeback. Um, resources of of water and food, really different. Um, everybody got guns, you know. She creates. She 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 tells you the truth. The disease and the drugs. She has it all in there, and and religion, and art. You know the part. The, and art. The the in her book. Um, she was trying to explore um, what would how to how, Jesus like how did Jesus start like mm -hmm. what what is it what is the beginning what is it how did how did we have this person come with a philo with a philosophy or a teaching or a way to to come out of the darkness and to come out of the wretchedness you know mm -hmm. and so of course she created this young woman who's like 18 years old you know. So she's not here no more, but I can't even talk about it. She's just so current right. and contemporary. But I love um, I love my friend Jacqueline Woodson. Um, Jackie writes um, books mostly for younger audiences, right. um, but she's devastating. Absolutely. She will, she will she will tackle any issue um, that uh, affects humans and and um, and she. And the, and the way that the positions that she puts girls in, um, in her book, they are, it's outstanding. You know, she, she uh, her latest book that she's doing, I think it's called Brown Girl Dreaming, and it's the story of her life. And she sent it to me before, you know, it came out and asked me, like, you know, to, to just, you know, make some notes or whatever. And it's about her life, about growing up and stuff. And she has these... Um, she these poems, so she's telling a story, and then there'd be these poems that would pop up, and the poems were like, "What are you doing to me?" Like I was bugging, like I was just like, you know. And it's it's for young, you know, for teenagers. I forget that group. I saw a note from her editor, and her editor was like, "No, this is too complex." And I was like, "Don't take this mm -hmm. out," because in this poem, I was like, "There is a girl that's gonna read that," mm -hmm. you know, some poem on, you know. It was about a, a something looking like a river that that you know went this way and the other and it went that way and it kind of a return thing, and I was like that is there is some girl that's gonna read that and know what you're talking about like she needs to hear that, so Jackie is Jackie is really fierce and um, another person I love is a lawyer, mm -hmm. um, Karen Thompson is a lawyer here in New York she works for the Innocence Project and. Um, the Innocence Project, you know, which is getting people out of jail who've been in jail for doing nothing mm -hmm. wrong and being, you know, falsely accused. Karen is one of the best. Um, Karen's one of the best writers. Uh, I I feel like she should write a book. I feel like she should run for office. 
Uh, she's brilliant, sister. Um, she uh, she's she's one of those people that will have that hard conversation on Facebook or something that we're all like, oh, we can't have this, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> with so much grace and so much um, so much grace and 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 so right, you know, just so right and able to have a, a a back and forth conversation with people who disagree with her. And I've seen her have a conversation where somebody and her are like opposites and it's like I was like this should be printed out in somewhere like we should you know y'all should do a thing on her mm -hmm. Karen is a badass and she's she is one of the best and most fierce feminists I I know on the on the planet mm -hmm. um, and she loves to sing and she's and I just consider her I told her you're an artist um, and she's like, I'm a lawyer. And I'm like, no, you're an artist. Mm -hmm. Like, the, you write all the time. You teach all the time. And you're creative with your language. You are an artist, you know. Um, I love um, Nikki Finney, the poet. Mm -hmm. And I love Janelle Monae. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I don't know where that child came from. <laughs> but I was so happy to see her. She, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you know, turning herself into like a an android, <laughs> like dancing like James Brown, turning herself into an android and can sing anything. Right. And we'll answer no questions like about her life. You know, right. I just am like, wow. You know, I just think she's amazing and. Um, I don't know what to say about the next sister. I just think I love that she makes such a fuss over that she makes such a fuss over uh of her of her her feminism is Beyonce. Mm. You know, like um, my mother has a song uh about uh Joanne Little um Joanne Little uh if people don't know her case Joanne Little is back in the seventies. And Joanne Little was a black woman. She got arrested for uh, being a part of a, a, a robbery. Um, she was in jail. She was in a jail cell. The jailer uh, forced her in a sex act, and he brought a knife in and forced her. She got the knife away from him, and she killed him, and she escaped. And there was a hunt for her throughout the land. And my mother, uh, I'll never forget this, we go to the local barbershop to get our afros done and the men in the barbershop the brothers were laughing about um, what was the sex act that he was in that allowed her to get the knife and kill him like what part of it was he in mm -hmm. she was furious you know she got her babies and she left there and she sang she wrote this song of, uh, about about Joanne Little and she's like Joanne Little she's our mother she's our sister um, she's your lover. Joanne's the woman to carry your child, you know. And she has this this verse in it where she says, you know, I've always been told since the day I was born to leave those no good women alone. Keep your no, keep your butt off the street. Keep your nose clean. Keep your butt off the street. You're gonna be judged by the company you keep. Mm -hmm. Then along comes this woman, a little over five feet tall, charged in jail with breaking the law, and it goes on and on. So Beyonce saying she was a feminist, and then. The the way people talked about her, once she said it, mm -hmm. it reminded me so much not of of Joanne Little, um, but of that verse where my mother's talking about like that woman that other women tell you not to value because they not what you think they should be to be able to hold this kind of sanctified space. Right. And I was like, wow, look at that. They don't want Beyonce to be a feminist. They don't want, because, you know, she's not allowed to hold the sanctified space of feminism. And I'm like, well, you know, if she says she's feminist, she's feminist. You can't do nothing to her. You can, you can be like, well, I don't like what she, what her definition. I don't even think she made a definition. She just said, this is who I am, right. you know. So I, I love the complication of like kind of the biggest female star, uh, music star on the planet. I don't know who's bigger than her at this point. She's the biggest one on the planet. Right. Um, saying she's a feminist. Right. 
and the and what it and what it was a, this catastrophic like explosion of of emotions and things. That's so interesting. Right. It is. It's fascinating, and it sort of reflects back on us then what our definitions of feminism have become. Right. That we now have in mind a feminism that can include this this woman for whatever reason, right? And you know, what kind of feminism is it if it has to disinclude somebody who, you know, who's a performer in the way that she is, someone who is new to feminism in the way she, that she is, someone who has been educated and has not been educated in certain ways, you know, like her. I mean, in many ways it, it really asks us to think about how we're defining feminism and how capacious that word can be for us if it can include as you said, the biggest celebrity on the planet, right? And the biggest performer. The, she's, you know, in a way, she's got the sort of the most vocal reach, you mm -hmm. know, of an of of artists on the planet because you know everyone is aware of what she says, and that yet she says, "I'm a feminist," and we don't want to hear it. What does that mean about our own feminism, in a way? I don't know what it means, but I always say, young younger people come and mess up what you thought you know. Mm -hmm. They come and they change it. You know, they. They, she actually comes out of the the culture of of um, sampling, the culture of you know building tracks with like a thousand different hands on it. Like for her, um, anything can get can can get smashed together. You know she'll she'll see somebody from one place and she'll be like, I like that. I'm gonna put that in a in a uh, a video. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. You know. Um, and somebody is like, do you consider yourself a powerful woman in charge of her life, concerned about women in the world? Do you consider yourself a leader? I mean, every what every record she always has her her what she considers her feminist anthem on it. That's you know, right. she's like, yeah, you know, That's I'm right. a survivor. Right. You know, like. right. Um, you've said in interviews that the name of your band, Big Lovely, comes from a letter that you once received that was addressed to you as My Big Lovely, mm -hmm. um, which is very beautiful, and I've always loved this name for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it really expresses the energy that you give on stage um, mm -hmm. and the energy that sort of comes through in your, in your music. Uh, and, you know, when in thinking about this idea of sort of feminist fuel or fuel for feminist action, I think that that energy in itself sort of serves that function, right, as a fuel to sort of motivate people through the work, you know, what Audrey calls the work that we do. Um, so I'm curious, who or what are your big lovelies? Who is it that gives you that beauty and that energy? Uh, that's really a good question. Um, Well, I think that the biggest source of energy is, is to me, like, one is um, just a congregational spirit, is what I call it. Like, anytime you, you get, we, you're in that space where a lot of people are raising their voices together, um, creating energy together, mm -hmm. it's the best. It's the best place to be. Um, well, I, as I heard my mom talk about um, music that came out of the civil rights movement, and um, and people always ask me like, "Can we do that again? Mm -hmm. Like, how can we, how can we have that again?" And there's this thing about, okay, to use the medicine, you have to already have it. Like, you have to already know it. You know, like mom's like, we sang all the time. We we sang around the table. We sang our prayers. We sang in church, we sang in school, you know, by the time you were two, three, four, you, you know, they put you up in front of the church and you sing like, you know, Jesus loves me. Um, they had a massive mu musical vocabulary that they could use any time. And so for me, my, my, my big lovelies are when I, when I can get to witness or be a part of, of that same kind of thing, the, the fact that we have figured out how to, you know, I don't, it's going to sound hokey again, but mm -hmm. I can't, this is what it is. <laughs> you know, there is a common, um, there is a, a common base of knowledge that when it's needed and when it, when it is called to, we know what it is and we show up and we execute it. Mm -hmm. That is the most 
fantastic. Uh, you know, that's the most fantastic thing. And um, and then it, just in terms of, I guess, other artists, you you know, that or, or in general. I mean, I think you know, you you kind of you hit it. If that's it for you, just yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it, you know, there's other you know groovy moments like you know, I don't know, being at the water is pretty <laughs> extraordinary and. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm one of those people that wake up every day and look outside and say thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm one of those people I love, I love, um, I respect and admire any woman that has another human growing inside her. I just think it's got to be one of the most complex things mm -hmm. and ever. And um, I, I can't imagine that. I knew right away that wasn't going to be my journey here. But, you know, for women who do it, I just... I just think it's amazing, mm -hmm. and anybody, anybody who has, has a, has like one of those sk skills with their hands, mm -hmm. like acupuncturist, or somebody could build furniture, or somebody who like paints a room or mm -hmm. fixes things. I, I just think, oh my God, they're like a god, you know? Like those <laughs> are my rock stars. Wow, and, man. And they're really, really smart, um, smart people, like. Uh, like you, like my friend Karen, um, you know, it's a, it's you did, it's a, it's a, um, it's a skill to carry so much language, so much intellectual work, and I uh, said so to, to to Sean, you know, when you go to college, you're gonna be right about a lot of things, but you can't just know what's right. You have to know everything that's around it mm -hmm. in order to. That's when you start to become an intellectual. When you can have all of these different kinds of conversations and you can speak to when someone is saying but what about this mm -hmm. you know um, and so there is such a great um, skill I, I equate it with being a musician with having to learn an instrument like your mind it's, it has to be fine-tuned and you have to invest in yourself and, and, and write and take care of yourself and hone your craft and, and you know I that's it for me, man. I I love people like that. I just they're so important, um, and I'm so grateful for the brilliant people in my life. Like it's really awesome. Well, we're grateful for you as well, and I'm super grateful to you for you know taking the time to talk with us at the Feminist Wire. You know, it's an honor to talk with you. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk with you. And you know, thank you so much for sharing you know sharing your your time and having this conversation. Well, big up the Feminist Wire. I love it. I learned so much from reading it. And, uh, you know, it's great to be here. Thank you. Sounds good. And have fun. Have fun making music. You know, that's right. <laughs> Don't worry. We will talk to you soon. Thank you again, Toshi. Peace. Thank you.